What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Power BI tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking a look at conditional formatting. Now conditional formatting may sound familiar because we looked at it in the Excel series and it's very similar how you use it in Excel versus how you use it in Power BI. Conditional formatting allows you to take a table or a matrix within Power BI and use those cells to color code them and create gradients and different visualizations within the actual table or matrix. I'm excited to start this one, so let's jump over my screen and get started with the tutorial. All right, so before we get started, if you wanna use the data that we're using in this video, you can find it in the description on my GitHub. Now, conditional formatting is super simple and you've most likely used it in Excel before, but you can also use it in Power BI and let me show you how to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is come over to our Apocalypse store and we're gonna pull up our product name as well as the price. And what we can do is come over here and we're gonna to go to price and it has to be under the columns. So you can't come over here and do this. We're gonna come right over here to price and we're gonna right click and let's go to conditional formatting. And we have background color, font color, icons and web URL. Let's take a look at background color first. This is most likely the one that we'll look at the most. So we're gonna get this pop up and I'm gonna slide this over. Now, there's a lot of different things we can customize in here. And the first thing I want to take a look at is format style. We have the gradient and what it's going to say is the lowest value will be this color, highest value will be this color. It'll give us this gradient color scale. And so we'll use that in just a little bit, but we can also create rules, kind of like an if statement. And if it is between this range and this range, we'll give it a color. And if it's between a different range and a different range, we'll give it a different color. So we'll also try that one. And then we have this field value. Uh, and this one is one that uh, honestly, I don't use that much. I've used it maybe once. And what you can do is select a text field like customer, and you can do some summarizations on the first and last, and that is it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at gradient specifically for not the customer, but we're gonna go back to the apocalypse store and we're gonna do it on the price. Now, what I'm gonna do is keep it as the count because this is what the default is and we're gonna go back and fix it later. But what we want our lowest value to be is this bright green showing that this it's a cheap product, it's easy to purchase. The high value ones are going to be just the shade of red, more expensive. And we'll do it on the count. Now remember the count is on each of these and we're not doing a count of how many are sold, we're doing a count of each product. So it's just one per row. So it all should be the same color. Let's take a look. So it is all the same color. But what we really wanna show is the actual price, not just the count of the price. So let's go back to conditional formatting. We're gonna click the background color again. And this time we're gonna change the summarization. Now you can do sum, you can do average, minimum, maximum. It really doesn't matter for this example. The number is the same regardless of really which one we choose. So we can just choose the minimum. And it's gonna choose the minimum of each row, which is the price. So we're just gonna select minimum for this example. We'll select okay, and it should correct it accordingly, which means the bright green is the lowest and it goes all the way up to the highest, which is the red. Now let's go over here to apocalypse sales. We'll add in the units sold uh, and let's move that out a little bit. And I'm doing that on purpose because we're about to look at something within the conditional formatting. So let's go to units sold and we'll look at the conditional formatting for this one. Now, if you noticed, we now have a new one on here called data bars. Now we're able to see data bars on units sold and not price because units sold is something like a sum, an average, something that's aggregated. But let's take a look at data bars because I wanna show you how to use this and then we'll go back to the background color. So for data bars, we are gonna taking a look at the lowest to the highest value. Again, we're gonna go from bright green all the way to this exact red. It's gonna be from left to right. And what it's gonna show you is if it is a positive number, which all of these are, is gonna be a green bar, basically representing the number that you see in here along this line. So let's click okay. And we're gonna be able to see the highest numbers and let's scooch this over quite a bit so you can kind of get a better understanding. And we're gonna do it from highest to lowest. So we sold the most multi-tool survival knives at 477 and so this entire bar this row is entirely filled up or almost all the way filled up while as it gets lower and as we sell only 182 solar battery flashlights 
the bar is going to represent that and show that. Now, I'm about to completely mess up this visualization on purpose because it's about to get very messy to show you that you can do a little bit too much. Uh, it is possible. What we're going to do is we're going to go right over here to this background color unit sold. And instead of gradient, let's look at rules. Now, with the price, we just did a gradient scale but we can do basically groups of these and say if a number is greater to or equal than this number, then it's gonna be a certain color. And then if it's in a different range, we can give it a different color. So we're gonna say if it's greater than or equal to zero, and we're gonna say number, not percent. And if it's less than 266, because we have 265 right here, let's make it a nice uh, like gold, a beautiful, lovely uh, mustard gold, just, just great. Now we're gonna say, if it's greater than or equal to, and we'll do 266, because this says less than 266, so it should be greater than or equal to 266 number. And if it is less than, we'll say 500. Now we wanna do this one and we'll give it, uh, let's do like a peach. And we'll click okay. And now we have another conditional formatting on top of that that can give us more information. Now. Again, you should not do this. It's just too many. Now let's go one step further and make it even more ridiculous and show you one more thing before I show you how you may actually want to use this. Uh, let's go back to unit sold. We're gonna right click, go to conditional formatting and you can do something called icons. Um, font color is the exact same thing as background color except it changes the, the font and so I'm not really gonna look into that one. Icons are very simple, extremely similar to Excel and how you've seen them and the rules that you can apply to them are basically the same as if you're doing like a gradient. And it's these if statements that we saw before. Now it auto gives us this right here, which basically says zero to 33%, 33 to 67, 67 to 100. If it's in the bottom third percent, it gives us this red, the middle is yellow and the top is green. So we can go through and change all of this, but honestly, this looks pretty good. So let's click on it. And so the ones that are our least sellers are these red ones right here, and the top sellers are up here. Now, this is just based on units sold, and this looks absolutely terrible. So let's kind of take this exact information, but make it a little bit better. So we're gonna create a new visualization, or at least a new table. So let's click on product name, and we'll take the price, units sold, and revenue. And what I think makes the most sense for looking at revenue is these data bars right here. But there's only one problem. I can't do that because it's not summarized like unit sold was. But what I can do is to get that those data bars is I can come right down here instead of saying don't summarize, I can summarize it and I can just click the sum. So it now is summarized, it's the exact same number, but if I right click on here as sum of revenue, and I go to conditional formatting, I can now use those data bars. And so we're gonna use those data bars and we're gonna say for the lowest value and the highest value. And let's just make it a nice, maybe a darker green. I don't want it to, well, oh, that's, that's hideous. Let's make it this color right here, a nice dark green. And there's no negative, so it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go left to right. And you can show the bar only, but we're gonna keep it because I wanna see it. And we're gonna go just like this. We're gonna order. And this is pretty telling. Um, I, honestly, I did not think the weatherproof jackets were performing so well, but I mean, they are by far our number one seller. So, you know, our weatherproof jackets, multi-tool survival knives, and the nylon rope are perform outperforming all of our other products. So those might be the ones that I focus on the most while duct tape, the N95 masks, and waterproof matches, I mean, those are, those are garbage. So I might be looking to replace those in the near future with some other items that might sell a little bit better. So that's how you use conditional formatting and it's actually pretty useful. There are a lot of times where I've done something like this in an actual visualization for work and it looks something like this. It just depends on what you're visualizing but this is very much a simple thing that you can do to just add a little bit more information and, and actual visuals to this little chart or table that you're gonna create. Sometimes it's just better to have these simple visualizations on this table rather than just having the numbers themselves makes it a little bit more easy to read and understand. So again, I hope that this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and check out all my other videos on Power BI and I'll see you in the next video.